soovib inglise keele peale minna siis süsteeme seda. Et tere tulemast ABB seminaarile ja siis ka nii-öelda workshopile. Minu nimi on Kerda Markus ja vastutan siis ABB Baltikumis kõikide värbamiste eest ja ka siis brändingu tegevuste eest. Ja hästi hea meel on teid kõiki siin näha. Kohe varsti on sõna Margusele. Margus on meie kõige suurema tootmisüksuse kvaliteedi juht ja tema siis jagab teiega oma enda lugu ja lisaks esitab teile ka siis sellise väljakutse, ehk siis teile on võimalik lahendada case study ja pakkuda omalt poolt lahendusi tootmises reaalselt nii-öelda väljakutsuvatele olukordtele. Kerda, just to interrupt you. I think we have someone who's probably not speaking Estonian. Does Niim, can you confirm if you Uh, are able to communicate in Estonian or we should uh, switch over to English? That would be nice uh, to switch to English because I don't speak Estonian. <laughs> yes, no worries. no worries. Just uh, let's move to the uh, to English language. Then uh, I was just introducing uh, Markus, who will uh, then present uh, his story in ABP, uh, becoming a leader from uh, interns position actually and uh, and then he will challenge you uh, with the real life uh, challenges in in production company so Markus, floor is yours okay thank you and hello to everyone from my side uh, i'm Margus, and uh, i'm going to share my journey today with you Um, and because uh, I was like eight years ago uh, exactly the same uh, as you, like a student in Taltec University. And uh, also my journey includes uh, this Vitti uh, Tulaviku fair and uh, being a student in Taltec, uh, student life, uh, joining ABB as an intern, working here experiences and um, and everything like that. So I hope that this is relevant to you at the moment. Uh, you, you, you get some, uh, some good ideas from today's seminar. And um, yeah, in the end, we will uh, go through a case study that is uh, uh, real, uh, has been a situation in the team that, uh, that I'm leading. And in the end, I think we have time for some uh, discussions and also talking about this uh, internship. Uh, this year. Am I right, Gerda? Yes. Good. Okay, so then we can start. Um, so a little bit uh, some facts about me. Uh, I'm 30 years old. I have a bachelor's degree in science of engineering, product development and production technology in Taltec that I uh, graduated in 2013. Um, then uh, I continued my studies in Teltec uh, in industrial engineering and management, uh, where uh, I graduated in 2015. And currently for the past uh, like two, two and a half years, uh, I have been uh, working in the role of uh, head of quality department and uh, a member of management team here in ABB, uh, Large Motors and Generators uh, Local Division Estonia. The names are often a little bit uh, long and confusing when you, when you might see those ads, uh, but uh, it, is, it is a large company, that's why. Uh, and I'm also leading this quality model implementation program in six, uh, six units uh, in ABB Large Motors and Generators. Division. Uh, they're located in Estonia, Finland, Sweden, India, US, and China. And I'd say biggest achievement so far for me personally is to be managing the department of 12 employees, which is the same department where I first joined as an intern or trainee uh, now almost eight years ago, seven or eight. So this is about me. Mm. Now the starting point uh, starts after uh, finishing the high school uh, where I was um, uh, thinking about uh, where to join, uh, which, which university and which uh, field of study. Um, I, since since I, I've always been passionate about uh, mathematics 
then uh, then I know that uh, the engineering field uh, looked interesting. And from the brochures in uh, Taltec, uh, I found this uh, uh, production uh, management to be really interesting. So I chose based on the speciality, what I like and what I'm good at. Um, but but actually, I was thinking about a whole, whole lot of different things back then, like design, like finance, uh, even psychology. So those are re really different fields. But um, but uh, eventually chose that because I like the uh, like the description of the manufacturing manager that it was it's written here. It's like a manufacturing manager acts like a conductor who conducts the production like an orchestra and makes everything move in one beat. So so as simple as that. And I, I made that decision. Um, so so this was like um, when I joined Taltech, then it was uh, uh, really a beginning of a new phase in life. Since uh, I come from uh, Viljandi, which is in the middle of Estonia, a city with like 18,000 people. So it's a small city, um, especially if you have foreigners here coming from maybe a larger country. So, um, so this was a start of the independent life. Uh, a lot of things changed. My uh, my home, uh, the um, uh, the new new my uh, these co co uh, fellow students, um, and everything was new and exciting. Uh, the the studying began almost immediately as well. So so there was a lot of a uh, lot of changes in coming at once. And um, this is really important then to uh, know how to hold your balance. Um, the, the balance between uh, studying and everything else. Because uh, uh, one thing can just take all the time uh, away. Um, and, and as they say that. Um, as they say that um, when you're a student. You have three things uh, like good grades, social life, enough sleep, and you, you get to choose two of those. Um, well, I would say the reality is more like uh, you, you get to uh, choose your time between going to classes. Maybe some of you already work, you have families, you need to do the homework, you need to have enough sleep, you have your hobbies. Yeah eating outside with your friends, uh, love life, uh, extra activities, whatever. So so this it's a lot. And and then like like said here that you might attempt to do everything until stress takes over and things start slipping. You end up crying in your bed, deciding not to do none of it and just watch TV to escape somewhere else. Well, I think this is quite, uh, you all, all know that uh, you might have done that a few times to, to just escape it all. But, uh, but yeah, um, just uh, you ha have to find the priorities uh, between, between the things. Then um, wh while studying and, um, and working at the same time, um, the, the the first year of university life, uh, it it like te taught me like how it's going to be exactly that. Uh, what are the expectations from the university, uh, and how how to divide your time? Um, and there were quite uh, significant changes happening then. Uh, for example, a lot of uh, fellow students uh, uh, basically changed uh, their um, um, well, quit or change the field, uh, but it was good that uh, the, the fellow students I was collaborating with and, uh, and my friends, they remained the same uh, because we had a similar interest and uh, similar drive. So, um, so the, we, we, we would orientate it the same way. And, um, but then the biggest change in the first year, I remember was, uh, at the point where my parents told me that okay, it's now time to um, uh, start uh, paying your own bills. So, so these new, new challenges might be frightening in the beginning, but uh, but nevertheless, um, you should embrace them. So, so accept them. Don't be afraid. 
because uh, always they they bring um, they they bring um, they pay back those uh, those challenges if you face them. Um, so I had to find a job where to where to uh, be able to pay my own bills. And I got a recommendation um, from a friend that in uh, Elisa, which is a telemarketing company, uh, or I mean, uh, it, it's an um, information and telecommunications company uh, as a, to work as a telecommunications uh, salesman. And that was really an uh, interesting time, uh, working together with my age uh, people. Uh, met a lot of friends there, uh, was really excited because I was uh, doing sales for the first time of my, in my life. Uh, it was a new thing for me and also scary in the beginning, but uh, actually I started liking it really much. And, um, um, and that's, that's, that's where I learned a lot of uh, skills uh, that are not maybe directly connected to engineering, but um, that was a, a lesson learned for me that uh, you don't have to start working at the same field that you're studying at once. That's that's uh, that's OK, um, because uh, for self-development, it's important to have these different skills and experiences from other areas. You will find ways to utilize those skills later in your uh, in your field that you're studying and hopefully later working in. So so there was. There, I had long hours uh, during the day. It was uh, the school, and in the evenings uh, I was working at uh, Elisa. Uh, but I never felt that I don't have energy because uh, when you like something that you do, then uh, it actually gives you more energy in the end. Um, um, and and a lot of friends I met there are still my friends today, working in. Um, working in uh, in sales in different fields uh, and and we we still hang together so so it's a it's a great time uh, and you, what I want to say you don't have to give up the student life while you while you're studying uh, so enjoy that as well because that is one of the uh, really fun time in the life so um, then came the uh, 2013 year, which was like a turnaround for me towards professional career. Um, that was a time where I had fi finalized my uh, bachelor thesis. And uh, I had spent like two years working as a salesman in, uh, in, in Elisa. And I was uh, pretty much on the crossroad that uh, what to do to uh, either to continue my career in sales or uh, or, or move uh, move into the uh, mechanical engineering field somehow, and and I had uh, also chances to accept new challenges uh, in sales, but but then um, but then actually I I went to the Viti Dulaviku Karjärimes. To to uh, to find out uh, what are the opportunities uh, in the in the industry, and there uh, ABB uh, really caught my eye, uh, being a global organization with this uh, innovative uh, products and uh, and really exciting um, uh, information that I I got from there. So basically. So soon after, I ended up in a in a round of uh, round of candid candidates uh, to get uh, to apply to a engineering position, intern position in ABB, um, because that felt really the place where I could uh, like utilize my learned skills from university as a mechanical engineer. So so there I was sitting together with like. Um, uh, 10 or 20 other uh, engineers, some of them I already knew from school. So uh, it was a quite, uh, quite tense, the, the application for those intern places, because I remember that we, there were like two or three of us applying for one position. 
So, and, and I knew some of the guys. I knew he was, okay, these are smart guys as well. So I had to use actually my skills from the sales to like uh, somehow diversify myself from the bunch. Uh, and, and basically that helped me get, get the position, I believe. Um, and, and I got a feeling that today, in, um, today uh, this year seems to be quite similar because uh, uh, there might be a little bit less um, positions compared to maybe previous years. So this competition might be quite, uh, quite big this year as well. So but I want to say is just find uh, find your uh, competitive edge. Um, what's your advantage? And think about it. It's uh, it can be a lot of different things. So um, and um, then then I started. Uh, uh, fortunately, I was selected and and started the internship in ABB where I immediately thought that, okay, I need to like uh, give, a, give my best effort here in order to learn as much as I can, because the internship, I believe, was like three months in the summer. Um, so, so I got the task to uh, take a um, uh, look and uh, develop the material inspection process and map it. Uh, I was me. Uh, co-workers uh, learning about the process then uh, using my um, experiences from school to to uh, to think about the improvements possible uh, possible to do in that process so so I was um, I was really engaged uh, and and I guess that this uh, caught the eye because after two months uh, there was an opportunity uh, and I was offered uh, a, a permanent job, full-time job as a quality engineer uh, in, in ABB. And I was really honored and uh, happy to, to learn that and I accepted it immediately. So, um, so really implementing your studies in work life and uh, searching for those connections here uh is is helpful for both sides your your current studies or and your professional career and it simplifies your understanding of the area in both uh both uh, locations whether it's uh, uh university or the company marcus may yep. i interrupt interrupt uh, maxim has question actually so yeah maxim, you wanted to ask yeah why not? yeah uh, i do have a question uh, you said that uh, the place you were applying to was really competitive and I would like to uh, just ask you about what was the position. Was it production engineering as I understand of your bachelor degree or uh, what was it? Well, the, actually uh, back then I'm not sure 100% how it's now but I, I was able to apply for uh, I think there was a forum where I had to list uh, my uh, number one choice and my numbers two and three choices. And as I found out, okay, there's like uh, three of us for one position. I remember my first choice was production management. Second choice uh, was production development. And third choice, uh, or, uh, or, uh, or was it that quality engineer and production development was my second choice so uh and i was offered the quality engineer position so uh things do not uh, always uh you know go exactly like you plan but you might end up in a in a very interesting place so uh did i answer your question sorry i'm not sure yeah yeah thanks a lot okay yeah. actually well, i have right now the same system you have three options to choose so actually it's better to choose all of the three to have yeah, like yeah for sure go for it you you, yeah. you won't regret it it's you will get uh good experience as well whatever you choose <laughs> thanks yeah uh okay and then uh, actually after th that um uh, when I started working in ADB, I also uh, finalized my bachelor's and I uh, uh, 
joined also the master's studies immediately. And this again, like already mentioned, it, it simplified understanding of the studies and, uh, and ABB as well. Um, so, so and, and my master thesis was also in cost reduction. The topic was the uh, quality cost reduction in my departments where I was the quality engineer. That went really well because it was like uh, it was very beneficiary for the company. We, we implemented it, we, we got the gains and also I got a good grade in the school. So, so that was that was perfect for me. Uh, stu uh, studying and working at the same time, basically I was continuing in the, in, then I just switched it because during the day I was working in ABB and in the evenings I was in the school, uh, in the master thesis, that's, that's, uh, that was in the evenings. Um, then moving, uh, mo moving on, um, and, and ah, the final point that, uh, uh, it's not about only that what the company gives you, you, you have to think about uh, what you give to the company as well, that uh, uh, that really helps you stand out whether you're an intern or uh, already working somewhere. Uh, and, and why not, especially when you're an intern, don't just uh, expect that, okay, I'm here now, tell me, uh, you, you control everything. Uh, I, I, uh, I uh, suggest you to uh, uh, also uh, think freely, take control yourself and uh, try to think what you can give to the company and you will stand out then. Uh, okay, now then about some experiences working at ABB. Uh, there has been a lot of challenges throughout these uh, six or seven years here. Um, and I'm really, really grateful for them because challenges are really the, the things that develop and grow you professionally and um, for example in 2015 uh, we had uh, simultaneously here two big uh, customer uh, claim cases that was really international uh, customers and uh, the scope uh, of the products that were affected that was global. Uh, those numbers were, um, uh, were were quite high. And um, and for example, uh, the the first example was that um, we had these um, these generators uh, that were uh, installed in power plants all over the world, uh, Asia, Americas, Europe. Um, uh, and uh, both South America and North America, uh, no, actually only in South America. Uh, and the, the problems occurred only after the generators had been working for one or two years. That was uh, actually a symptom that was combined with the engine, so it was not really that uh, that a, a problem was what with only with our generator, but it was like uh, between two companies. The, one company made the engine and we made the generator. Um, those generators were mostly in quite exotic locations, those power plants, and uh, in order to solve that case, uh, I had the chance to put together the team of two welders, uh, me as a coordinator and the one inspector, and we went to mm, Bangladesh for three weeks. Um, that was really um, a challenge because uh, uh, to to organize this trip, to take care of the uh, logistics of those tools uh, there, to get the safety equipment uh, and the safety requirements filled in that location, the culture change, the the hour difference, the the religion, everything, and uh, that uh, that was a first encounter with with such um, a place where everything was basically different. And, and also to communicate with the heads of the power plant or the owners actually even of the power plants. Um, that was a very, very re remarkable experience back then. Uh, my, my biggest uh, challenge uh, so far. Mm, and actually, but we were successfully, we finalized our uh, repairs there uh, and came back, but uh, the, the whole process took about three years uh, to complete everything. 
And actually, uh, when when I started working, came back to ABB, I was actually away for some time, and and they were the customer was uh, trying to wrap up this case with ABB. A lot of people had changed during those three or four years in the customers' company and in ABB. So then, we, so then we sat together. We had a meeting. There was a uh, one, still one location, one power plant in the world that the job was not completed. But uh, that how how it feels and what what's the really the task itself. I knew exactly why why in that one. Power Power plant uh, job was not done. It was not actually ABB's um, uh, because of us, but it was because of the power plant. And basically, after that meeting, uh, because I knew that uh, we were uh, able to save a hundred thousand euros, we didn't have to fix that ourselves. The customer fixed it and actually even paid us, so we even earned the ninety thousand there ourselves. So, so you never know when uh, some experience can help you later in life um, in, a, in a next challenge or next position. So that was uh, uh, lessons learned from that one. And, and, the, uh, and also some of those opportunities might come just once in a lifetime. And uh, well, at least you have something to remember later. That's if, if not nothing else. Uh, and then in 2015, actually, the second big case was uh, a also a serial, um, uh, serial, uh, let's say, defect with a material from our supplier. But as these uh, generators were series generators, um, uh, there was a lot of a lot of uh, generators that needed to be, uh, let's say, uh, the material needs to be replaced. Uh, the, the customer was from Spain. Their factories uh, are in Spain, so uh, that was an example where actually mm, this case did not come to me because uh, as my uh, fellow colleague was handling it. But when she, uh, she left ABB in the beginning of this case, I thought that okay, it's actually good for me to learn something and gain the experience. So I I, I asked this to be transferred to me. So that's a, like a lesson that you you don't uh, the things don't come always to you, but sometimes you gotta you gotta make that decision yourself. Uh, then uh, basically, I traveled to Spain alone, met my colleague there, uh, who was a field service engineer, and we traveled to uh, through uh, Spain because their facilities are like uh, scattered uh, quite uh, evenly in in Spain in different uh, cities. So we had a really nice uh, field trip and we managed to um, uh, secure uh, those material deliveries, changes, change them, calm down the customer, showed them we have, uh, we are really fastly reacting and care about the customer. So again, like positive customer feelings, uh, mitigating the problem uh, with uh, almost no costs and having a really nice time with a colleague in Spain as well. So. Traveling always with a local uh, is, uh, is the best way of discovering uh, a country, I can also say. So this is a little bit about, uh, oh, and uh, actually a fact about this generator on the right side, we've manufactured those like a 700 of these here in this, our uh, manufacturing unit here. And if you add that up, the power of these generators, that would be like uh, like seven uh, these Estonian over uh, power plants combined. But as the wind uh, doesn't blow 100% of the time, uh, that means that the power generation is um, mm, not even, but we could uh, basically power 60% of Estonia's yearly uh, power need with those uh, number of generators we've manufactured. So that's just a fact. And a little bit about working in ABB, maybe some experiences. Um, then uh, always important topic again uh, in whether you're uh, studying, whether you're working, or or um, or something uh, else. Uh, talking about the giving up. Uh, so why people give up? Uh, there's 
there's different reasons for sure. Uh, sometimes it's because you're, the choices you make when you're young, they might not always be the right choices. And uh, you, but it's of course uh, a good uh, good idea to try as much as different things you can when you're young. Um, that help you find uh, your uh, real uh, passion. Uh, so, but it's uh, what's important is that you ne never give up on the wrong reason. Um, there's, a, there's a big difference there. So, for example, when before I joined university and when I was a high school in the summers, I was working in uh, in Villande there, like uh, two examples in a mattress manufacturing company. Uh, I think I was uh, uh, like uh, just an operator there, and. I had the feeling that, okay, those colleagues that I was uh, uh, daily like uh, talking with, they, we don't have much in common. Uh, the job that I was doing didn't like, I couldn't like uh, make my uh, strong um, strengths, utilize my strengths or knowledge there at all. And, and the days just uh, dragged and, and I didn't have like, um, I wasn't feeling happy there. So. So this, of course, was like uh, a different reason why not to continue in that that field. Um, but uh, but it's a uh, it's a different uh, thing when you uh, give up because it's not for me, but not because it's too difficult. So so um, so an university also is not always easy. Uh, all the subjects are not your favorite for sure, uh, but don't give up. Uh, make sure you you graduate, because there is um, many things why it's good. First of all, um, for example, even the salary levels are not uh, are higher when you graduated or or you haven't graduated. Then, um, in the eyes of the employer, uh, what it shows when you haven't graduated, it it basically is in one example of that you have given up once. So, um, but for the for the employer in a in a competitive world, it's really important to keep innovating, uh, solving new challenges, and 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 changing constantly, improving constantly. That takes a lot of hard work, and we don't uh, get to be we don't get to give up here. So uh, that's the that's the difference, I guess, when you're working, what you feel, um, and and it's um, uh, that's a, that's a, that's a one one thing to look at when we're looking through CVs, for example, when we hire people. Uh, and the other thing, what's the difference between uh, top professional uh, or a average professional is that again. Um, Top professionals, uh, they they work harder and they don't give up. Basically, good example are the pro athletes, for example. Um, the top athletes, uh, they're not always the most talented ones. They are the ones who are working the mo uh, the hardest. Uh, also, because there's a saying that um, hard work beats talent, where talent doesn't work hard. So. That's a really one thing I, I keep in my mind uh, to remember because you are all talented persons because you're in Taltech, um, but uh, that that's that's not uh, the only thing you need uh, in life. So, um, but what are the recommendations I could give that uh, what to think when when things get tough? Uh, then. I uh, think that uh, hard work always pays off. I'm sure uh, most of you already have some examples from your life. I can give one example from, from my mine previous uh, or relatively uh, recent example. Uh, like a, a year ago, the business manager here in Estonia came to me. He came from, from China actually to run, run this our unit and he was uh, uh, presenting me this uh, this quality framework, that uh, framework of how to manage quality. 
And, and it was really interesting to see that. It was like made by consultancy company. And I got really interested in that one. Uh, as, I, as I had like uh, multiple years of experience here in motors and generators, uh, I immediately started to have these ideas how we can like implement these basics or this framework or these ideas here specifically for our unit uh, and in the way we do things here because the, the factory that he came from was a completely different uh, ABB factory in mass production, it, the process is everything really different. But this framework seemed really good. Uh, so I uh, spent a lot of time with that and in a couple of months came up with a plan how to implement it here in our unit. Presented it to him, he really liked it and, and we, we launched it. I started to implement it here in Estonia. Then, a couple of months later, um, the news came out that, okay, we need to, uh, this same program is now to be, uh, to be implemented in large motors and generators, ABB as a whole. So we have large motors and generators units in six, uh, six countries, in Estonia, Finland, Sweden, US, India and China. And as I was already like implementing in models and generators, then they nominated me to be uh, to be to be leading that program. So I was really uh, honored and happy to have that chance. This experience was also new for me, and it was uh, it made uh, my working days quite long. Have to admit that it was not easy because my my responsibilities as the quality manager here in Estonia. Uh, remained. Uh, so that was an extra task, quite big one. But what what's uh, in the eventually um, being able to basically lead that project uh, has now in today's situation where the, let's say the global economics is a little bit uh, cooled down has secured my position better because uh, of that these uh, implementations, successful implementations, they have given us benefits, reduced the quality costs, and also I am um, more experienced and more, uh, let's say, useful and bring more to, back to the company. So, so I feel more secure as well as, a, as, a, as the, uh, from the employer perspective. So, just repeating, uh, it's it's not uh, just to talk about me. It's uh, the point is that um, to give you a little push and to show you that hard work does pay off, and and what is possible to to do uh, when you begin the internship and your career in a company. Um, then talking about a little bit about diversity and inclusion uh, in my role in ABB as well. Uh, so how to include uh, people more uh, into the organization is a really key topic uh, to give them empowerment. Uh, and here uh, I would say I would break that up into four uh, different segments. So it's about uh, info sharing, decision making, training and promoting. So it's really important to make everyone in the team uh, heard. There are different roles, there are different people, there are uh, for sure in ABB really diverse uh, also in our unit, and, but you need to encourage them so that uh, you would create an atmosphere where everyone always feels free to share their opinion in the meetings so that you really reap the benefit of diversity in that way uh, and, and the ideas. Um, uh, for example, uh, we're letting the team members share their failures and success stories. We have the, the weekly meetings where we can do that, the monthly department meetings, and we're taking uh, information from, from the management to our team to, to have everyone on the same page and on the same level of information so that no one's in the dark. Um, then about training people and promoting, um, it's really important to develop uh, people not only through external trainings, but through the hands-on work as well. 
So uh, it's important to combine the tasks, projects, and also with the trainings. So for example, we, we, we have this uh, new customer and a new prototype project that, uh, that um, uh, requires us to um, qualify ADB uh, during this uh, industry, stra industry stra uh, standard in the wind, uh, wind energy sector. And there we had uh, had to do uh, send our uh, supplier quality engineers into the trainings to learn more about those industry standards in wind energy. And what came out to be uh, after the trainings, they got uh, immediately, they were able to uh, put to work the, everything they learned there. And this means that our qualification went really well. Uh, and today they are really valued professionals in the ABB uh, quality community. Uh, which, as we are a global organization, is also a good opportunity to talk with people from, from all over the world, basically. Um, and, and more about inclusion, uh, we talked about, I, I mentioned decision making and how to like, uh, how to make better decisions is always about uh, having the right information, having the right tools to react. So, in quality field, uh, it's really important to be transparent uh, and to, to have everything you need uh, easily accessible. So uh, when we've had this, for example, a lack of overview about quality issues within the function or uh, within different functions uh, is, is a problem in many organizations, uh, but then how to bring people on the same page and what we've done is that we've uh, uh, managed to build up uh, like these reports from our uh, data from our ERP system so that uh, every quality issue, all the necessary data is connected, is fresh, uh, live, and everyone has access to this. So people know where to focus, what are the top priorities, what are the top quality issues, so to assign their time and focus their time correctly. Uh, and here's just like uh, one example uh, from a report uh, about all the open and closed uh, quality issues uh, based on some filters. And this is like uh, available for everyone so that they're really easy to collaborate on, a, on an issue. And everyone's on the same page. Um, okay, time's running quickly, basically, uh, this uh, I've, I've uh, gathered here in one slide a uh, quick summary of, uh, of the points I want to emphasize for becoming a, a leader in the industry. So uh, to save time, I'm not gonna not gonna read those uh, all those for you, but uh, you can just uh, take time read them through. I, I think we will share somehow the presentation as well. So, so you'll for sure, uh, for sure, can take a look at those. Uh, so, I, I'm, I think before we have we start with the case study, which is next. Maybe we can have a question and answers if if everyone, if someone has any. Gerda or Gertu, maybe you can take a look. Can you yes. see and hear me? Yes. Uh, hello, my name is Arthur. Um, in the beginning, you talked about how you found your journey to ABB. And I have like a couple of questions to you regarding that. Um, you talked about university life. Were you in any student organizations? Um, I think I was not in a student organization. I think back then there was this formula and there was this best uh and maybe something else i was not back then actually um but we were really close with the course mates and we were spending time together on uh, our free time and etc so so I, ha I have to say i wasn't but a lot of my fellow students were and the second question is i see that soft skills have played a significant role in your career what would be your advice on how to be a better communicator 
Um, yeah, soft skills have played uh, for me personally a uh, huge role, but that's like individually who I am. Um, but how to develop the communication skills? Uh, definitely, first of all, I have to say that communication skills is always a thing everyone can learn and everyone can get better at it. Uh, but it really is the practice that uh, that develops it. So uh, whether it's uh, opportunity in to do your work in a in a communicate with strangers or or do some project where you can communicate with strangers. So I would just uh, encourage you to find opportunities uh, to engage with uh, different people, whether through work or just through your hobby or however, but it's something you practice and get better at. Thank you a lot. Is there any other questions you have in mind? You can whether ask in live or you can also chat uh, right into the chat. If not, I would propose that we can still have this Q&A afterwards as well. So we can now continue with the case study. And Gertu, we need your help in splitting our participants into the uh, breakout rooms.
from the suppliers uh, while they have limited know-how about the production schedule in ABB, uh, suppliers manufacturing technology and the material design. They, you should think about how to include them, about inclusion, but there are aspects that limit the inclusion. They are physically distant from the rest of the team. They're not very well acquainted with all the colleagues and the real value of work is not very well recognized. So try to think about solutions, how to include them, but keep in mind the aspects that influence it. So how would you solve the challenges? Okay, thank you. And I can see that Gerda already uh, also shared in the chat uh, the picture of the um, uh, task, so everyone can uh, look at it. But now let's start. I will start the breakout rooms uh, and let's agree that I will invite you back uh, five minutes after five. Uh, and uh, you don't need to do anything on your own. I can just um, invite you back and, and uh, we'll see here again after 10 minutes. Yeah. Yes, Gertu, and I, I will join uh, one by one all the groups as well, and I can share this uh, screenshot with them in the groups as well. Mm -hmm. It's just taking a little bit time, but uh, it's loading at the moment, so let's let's see. Okay, so all of them should be get it. I don't know if I have to uh, add you to all of these, maybe. Maybe at first uh, to the first one and give me just one minute and then I, uh, you can move me to the next rule. Kertub, me olime Särega esimeses üksinda, et äkki sa saad Säre liigutada näiteks teise gruppi ja mind ka, et ma lähen vaatan, kui palju selle osaleid on. Ja meil on veel siin, meil on ka Anne siin. Ja aga seal on mingi device erinevus, et kui on läbi telefonis, ma ei saagi liigutada breakout room sidesse. Okei, okei. Aga Annel oli ka küsimus Margusele, et võib olla. Kõik küsida siis. 
Ja ma liigutan sind kerda kohe. Ja teisi saak ma sanan sulle märku, kui, kui ma ei saa siin, kui seal ei ole inimesi. Ja kui kellegil oli Margu selle küsimus, siis võib saab küsida praegu.
in room two we had um, Sara, Targo, Mia, Maxim, Maria, Tasnim, Louisa. Yeah. Yeah. This is the list that I have. So I and Tasneen uh, were right doing some notes about what we were speaking. And uh, so I, I would like to present it something. Yeah, you can mm. just uh, talk. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I'm not showing any presentation, something like that. So if uh, workers are physically distant from the rest of the team, um, the best way to So the best way is to do some annual meetings for all of the team members, um, like once a week or maybe like after the lunch every day, so they could understand uh, the workflow and uh, realize how to uh, get the work done better. So uh, the answer for a second uh, problem was that doing some social inclusion events like uh, gathering in small groups which are in the um, same place located and doing some ice breaking challenges. Um, also maybe uh, with those who are not so closely located doing some um, wine and dine through the Zoom so they can cook together, maybe something similar, and drinking wine and just chatting about their life and all this stuff so they get acquainted, get to know each other, and uh, make the working process easier. Also, we had an idea to get some gatherings in one place, like conferences, so all of the team members could get to one place, like one city, uh, get to know each other, chat, and uh, speak about topic they are working on, like uh, something like that. For the mm -hmm. third topic, mm -hmm. the real value is not recognized um, something like that we had uh, in the university when uh, we were doing a project and we um, take the use uh, Jira platform where you can uh, write your tasks and how many hours you spend doing something. So for like if you're a worker, just, I don't know, engineer and you have a manager on top of you so for him it's better to understand what you were doing how many hours you were doing that and maybe give you a hand or uh, show you the better way of doing it also because um, in the third, third point is not mentioned exactly to whom uh, the real value of the work is not recognized and if it's not well recognized to the other part of the world so marketing marketing is a best way for realizing it because uh, when you are promoting something to the people I don't know even on Facebook they are getting to know with it they are understanding what, what other people are doing and uh, this work is getting more recognized. So yeah, that's our thoughts. Thank you. All right. I would like to add something with Maxim's points, like my perspectives or just to add something what we worked on for the all, all the cases. So for the first cases, uh, first case, I would like to add about the uh, meetings that we talked about, like the meetings should be like every week or uh, in every two weeks and the meeting should include what 
we have done in the past uh, two weeks and what is the planning for the next two weeks and to uh, that also kind of links with the third problem that is the real value of the work is not recognized we can actually de discuss this on the meetings and we sh we can correctly distribute the tasks to everybody so we know that who is doing what and that's how like the work will be probably recognized or something and yeah, for the third, second uh, point that we had, that uh, we are not well acquainted with each other, so we decided to have some social inclusion events where we can have ice-breaking challenges or some small dinner or um, a board game night, something like that, to bring people together so that they can share a few moments and get to know everybody better. Thank you. Thank you. These are good thoughts. Um, were those the, all the thoughts of the team too, or uh, also now combining the third one? Or it's team two. Okay. okay. Thanks, team two. Good, uh, good ideas. And uh, let's move on and uh, listen from the next team. I should represent uh, team three. Me and my two other wonderful teammates, Edward and uh, Lisette talked about uh, pretty much similar things as team two, but uh, just to repeat ourselves, then the first idea was to do motivational team events where uh, people stay motivated. Um, that means they actually talk with each other then there and they can do some kind of fun activities like uh, bake a cake or uh, do some kind of uh, chocolate factory um, tour. Then th the second idea was uh, once a week, there should be some kind of uh, briefing. So a brief overview. Uh, the most of it, uh, but I would like to add about data flow, like information that's flowing from the the quality team to the inspector, so that he knows that he's part of the team. If you receive like updates from them, and he gives them update directly. Mm -hmm. Yes. So some kind of a training program for the inspector about the schedule, maybe some basic training to for the first set of problems. And uh, yeah, some kind of weekly meeting or uh, the quality team weekly meeting should be, uh, also include the inspectors. Yeah, so they should have a sense of belonging to. Yeah, that's all for me. So, Gerto, have you now covered all the teams? Yes. OK, great. I can tell that a lot of ideas uh, were um, uh, 
I'm going to talk about them, how we also similar, uh, implemented similar things. So if we name those uh, um, key four key areas that we talked about before, like info sharing, trainings, decision making, promoting, then then yeah, we started a weekly material quality meetings, actually three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, uh, Friday. They have a slightly different agenda. Uh, we have a focus of the meeting. Uh, one topic uh, or one area uh, uh, is always in focus. For example, on Monday we take a look at all the open and closed issues. On Wednesday we take a look at the quarantine area. And on Friday also uh, like a weekly uh, summary. And uh, they are included there uh, together um, of the other quality engineers from the department uh, so that uh, and also production quality engineers so that we have a 360 view uh, input from our production how they see material quality input from supplier quality engineers who represent the voice of our suppliers and then the third part is the voice of these material inspectors that how they see things uh, from their perspective um, and then during those meetings, we use the Power BI reports so that everyone is on the same page regarding information. Uh, we also created a responsibility matrix for all material categories. So meaning that those material inspectors have their um, responsibilities uh, in, in with different materials. So they have expertise in some fields so that other people know who to contact uh, and who's responsible for what. Um, then and I'm really happy that all of you mentioned those weekly meetings and that's really a key key thing to keep us together. Then the trainings and decision making, uh, trainings about manufacturing processes to understand the manufacturing technology from their way and also material functionality. So if they, uh, they have had these uh, tours in our production and all the processes to uh, understand that, okay, these materials that they inspect and make the usage decision that, okay, what is really used and uh, what happens to it and why is it important for the customer? So that's, that's enhanced their uh, decision making. So they are now uh, available to or able to make those decisions because they know what's really the, uh, why is it not uh, uh, acceptable, some type of uh, defect and they can explain that to supplier better. Then fourth thing is really the promoting of people also that um, uh, we have in quality department also the monthly meetings uh, and there the material inspectors have their role to present the material quality performance uh, there. So they are sharing the successes and failures to the whole team. There's a 13 of us and they talk about that. That's their responsibility and they know, know best about that. Um, and uh, one thing more about the weekly meetings, there we use the Microsoft Planner where everybody uh, has their um, tasks and then we use the Power BI reports to see all the quality issues that, and the responsibilities behind those ones. Um, then about promoting, uh, we've uh, given them new tasks also to uh, empower them and uh, broaden their skills and experience that they gain in that role, for example. Uh, uh, they're analyzing supplier packaging issues. Uh, it used to belong to the supplier quality engineer, but we could divide the work and really grow actually more our material inspectors. So they learn about how to analyze quality issues using the, the Lean Six Sigma methodologies we use and etc. Then eliminating quality issues from warehouse processes. So we've made responsible a material inspector who uh, is coordinating all the quality issues related to warehouse processes. And also now they are doing some inspections in production, then they get more familiar with the production foreman, with the production operators and the process itself because they spend time there more. Um, and finally, uh, someone mentioned uh, combining with other departments, and that's also really a good thing. We have the job shadowing in ABB so that uh, one material inspector, for example, um, 
uh, one material inspector was uh, job shadowing uh, production form and position, so he, he'd understand more about that one. And today, actually, he is working as a material, uh, as, a, as a production foreman, so. But yeah, to conclude, uh, you had a very good ideas. Uh, we haven't baked the cake yet and we haven't uh, cooked together. So I'll, I'll, be, uh, I'll be trying to find time in the future to do those as well. Uh, mm. So, so great. Maybe I can just comment one thing that I heard, uh, which was also a really good one. I believe that uh, Artur maybe said that, um, uh, I liked how you said it as well, that uh, to make sure that people know what's going on in ABB. And I think uh, working in such a huge organization on an everyday basis, uh, we, all of us, we tend to really be caught up in our everyday work. But at the same time, you're correct in that way that uh, ABB provides endless opportunities and different activities. And I think it's also a good idea to maybe for managers to sometimes um, uh, make sure that their employees remember uh, all the activities that ABB is providing, accept their in everyday work as well. So I really like that this one. Yes, and okay. maybe just just to add a comment that how we currently operate during those COVID situation, even even when we are located quite uh, closely to each other. However, we are working from home then we try to find that at least one hour per week to kind of meet outside. So to stay safe, but, but still meet uh, in person uh, one hour per week. So it is also kind of a, we are challenging uh, current sit situation, so. Yeah. But now we have, uh, we've, uh... I believe we have time now for a few questions and also then in the end we promise to go uh, over the internship as well. Mm -hmm. But we can take the questions first, I believe. Yeah. Is there anyone that would like to ask their question here? And you can also type it into chat. You, you don't have to ask it in live. In that case, uh, I actually have one um, last question. Yeah. Um, you mentioned in the beginning about having, uh, let's say, paper or uh, how they say bachelor degree or master's degree. Um, is it? significant if I apply for a job at ABB with a bachelor degree or a master's degree? Did you say without or with or what? With, with, with. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a positive thing. But and we do have people, yeah, but we do have people who are um, going to the school at the same time as already actually working. So it's not like a no-go or red flag if you don't have it yet. Yeah, and it depends on the role that always depends on the role that you're applying for as well. Mm, so it means that you have part time jobs also. Um, I think we have part time uh, part time roles uh, possible because it's everything is moving more flexible. So so there can be agreements between the manager and a position that needs to be filled. So that's really always a case by case, I would say. So I cannot like say for the whole ABB, uh, but uh, there are flexible opportunities, I think. Yes, and uh, and usually for this kind of flexibility, we tend to use uh, internship contracts as so all the internships are paid in ABB. And this gives uh, us and this uh, in turn uh, more flexibility in their time uh, using as well. So um, yeah, we, we usually have full time positions, but the internship is always uh, very agreeable and um, and flexible in that sense. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 
And I would say in overall, ABB is quite flexible and, and it is always uh, kind of the agreement that is important uh, case by case uh, is done. So it's always a possibility to have those discussions with the manager who is hiring and, and everything is possible actually. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone has questions about um, internship hiring process or or internship hiring uh, pos positions that we have or but just for the information that we have now started to hire interns even though we have this COVID situation and we don't know, it is really hard to predict how many positions we will have. So currently we are already hiring 25 engineering positions. And of course we have uh, global business services where we are looking for HR, uh, finance and procurement uh, profiles. There we have uh, more than 50 positions even. So we still have uh, internship opportunities and I believe that uh, there might be uh, additional ones. Uh, application period is now uh, opened. Actually we opened it on, uh, on uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, February 14th and we, and we do it uh, so every year and so we close our application periods uh, April 14th and by May 5 we, we really try to give the feedback uh, to everyone even to those who haven't been selected to positions but the process itself is that uh, actually starting from February 14th all our managers who are seeking for interns they are already uh, seeking uh, and looking through this our Laura system, which is our database uh, for interns uh, and, and then already inviting to interviews and so on. So this process has actively is actively ongoing. And if you haven't been contacted or, or you haven't applied and you have some additional questions, then you can easily contact us and, uh, and as you can see on the slide, uh, the email address is eeelance uh, at abb.com. So you can easily connect and uh, have the questions or even if you have applied, so to say, um, share some additional information about your uh, interest or, or your previous experiences in some projects or even within a university. So just to secure your application, I would say, because uh, this year we have uh, a lot less opportunities than uh, previously we have had. Uh, previously we have uh, hired uh, 150 interns every year, but I would say that this year it would be most probably it's uh, not more than 80. Uh, so it's, uh, it's even approximately half of the amount that we are usually hiring. So who is the first one and more active one, uh, then we are able to offer you the uh, these positions we have now available. Yeah, but I have, uh, it's not only who is the first one, Gela. <laughs> of course, not only the first one, but yes. Don't, don't be afraid, you have time until April and uh, and don't be don't be afraid about that as well if uh, so far you haven't been contacted yet or anything like that because it's uh, managers might have different schedules might have different times and etc so so it's not uh, not uh, everything's not happening on the first day I, I just have to say that thank you for that and and uh, actually this 14 February was like yesterday so <laughs> We have just started with the process, so you have still time. Yeah. I can see that uh, someone is raising a hand. Does name? You have a question. Uh, yeah, I had a question about the the positions that you have for the moment of or internships. Like, uh, is, if the position is related more to business or.
second day in a row, I uh, could say that ABB has made wonders in this eye-opening um, presentation. And de definitely it comes uh, well together with the ongoing course engineering masterclass that uh, you're offering. And thank you. Thanks for good, kind words. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm really excited that, uh, Arthur, you have already here a uh, second day uh, arrow and you, you also attend in this master class because I, I really see that this is this is really uh, kind of a good addition to your studies currently. Definitely. I uh, cannot agree more. <laughs> OK, but I think that we are actually five minutes over time mm -hmm. uh, already as well. So in case uh, anyone has any questions further, um, you can always contact us via this email uh, that's provided in the slide on the slide uh, at the moment is e. you wanted to yeah i just wanted also to thank everyone uh, and uh, wish you all the best thanks a lot thank you so much it was really helpful thank you let's stay in in contact. Thank you and have a nice day. You too. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye bye.